Hi, it's Mike again. Welcome to a how-to video. In today's video is more of a tech tip about my Miller Maxstar 200DX. Um, I've had it for about seven or eight years now and it's pretty much been air-free up until recently. And what was happening was if I had weld for more than about five, five, six, seven minutes on, on more than 80 amps, the, the gas would stop flowing. I would lose the arc and it just looked would get very porous and so there was no more shielding gas for my TIG. If I would turn it off and wait about a half an hour I could start welding again. So I soon realized that if I were to just keep the amperage under 60 and take my time welding thinner metals um, and not increase the duty cycle too much I could I could extend my weld time but eventually the gas would stop flowing. So I did some online searching and no one really was having similar issues to this and a lot of people were suspecting that it was actually the solenoid that releases the gas once you start welding. So I looked at that piece and I took the machine all apart and looked at it and it seemed to be pretty, you know, almost new inside and the rubber seals, everything looked good there. Um, I do use this welder, but it's not in a type of production shop. So, it should, you know, those solenoids should last a lot longer than seven or eight years if using only once or twice a week. Uh, so I went to back to the shop where I purchased the welder and the, the manager there explained to me that I could try a few things. Um, maybe try the regulator or I was possibly overheating the torch. Now, I do not use the Miller torch. This is a CK130 torch. I'm really happy with it. It's, um, I don't really weld above 130 amps anyway. So this is a nice light um, TIG torch, which I really like. So I thought perhaps maybe that I'm actually overheating the torch itself. So I ended up buying some bigger accessories that could take heat better. So you can see the, the size difference, those two. Um, that didn't make a difference either. What I eventually found out that uh, it wasn't the regulator and it wasn't the torch and it wasn't the solenoid. So I'll show you what I discovered. So as I mentioned, I used the CK TIG torch and I bought the CK Super Flex 12 and a half foot hose. And this hose has been really good for a long time and it's, it's light and it's really flexy. So when I did it again, I determined to get to the bottom of it. When the gas stopped flowing, I quickly turned the welder off and disconnected the hose and I got my air compressor out and tried to blow air through one side and nothing would come out on the torch end side. And then I tried to do it vice versa, try to blow air from the torch side to the other side and no air would come out. So it was completely blocked and constricted. So I waited about a half an hour and tried it again and lo and behold, some air would come out. And when I waited overnight, more air would come out. So what I ended up discovering was that uh, when this got hot from the TIG torch, it actually constricted the rubber in here and therefore choking the gas coming out of here. So that led me to believe that there is either a pinch from the factory here or a flaw or maybe I stepped on it or um, it just can't handle that type of you know amperage. But realistically, anything over 80 amps would make this, this tube overheat. So I'll give you a closer look on my hose ends on the Superflex hose. You can see that it's not crimped very well from the factory. Um, this is kind of oblong and both ends are actually like that. So I um, think that's part of the problem. And this is the actual hose, Superflex hose that I purchased. And this is the new hose that is not as flexible, but it seems to take the heat better. This is the CK, just the normal power and air hose. And it is a little bit more rigid, but it, to me it seems like it is actually a lot more skookum so I will have no issues with that this I must have at one time had a, a welding way too hot and it, it actually went down the torch into this hose disfigured the hose inside here and kind of kind of made a memory of what was there so whenever it got hot it just constricted it even more so I'm glad I figured out what the issue is with my welder because I really didn't want to purchase a new one or get it fixed and the simple fix was just buying a new hose so I got my new hose all hooked up and it's working flawlessly. I'm really happy that I've got to the bottom of it. For the record, I was using a cable protector on this and I was quite adamant not to step on it or to put a stool on or anything like that. So I'm not sure what happened to the hose. This hose is no good for me and I'm happy with this hose, which is actually another CK hose and it's more, looks like it's more robust, but it's not as flexible, but I'm willing to live with that. 
So if you're having similar issues as well using the Superflex hose, what I'd recommend doing is when it's all cold, try to pass some air through it. And if a little bit of air comes through it, then you know it's not a complete obstruction. And then when it does it again, when it's hot, immediately take it apart and try to blow it, air through it again. And if you can, then well, you know it's your hose, it's the issue as well. So I hope that helps you. And once again, thanks for watching.